All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> Are we ready to do some pu uh, puppets and props today? <laughs> we have Jennifer Strauss with us uh, from Story Be Told. And on your screen right now, you can see that we have um, a link to some handouts as well as today's survey. If you help us out by completing the survey after each and every webinar, um, that helps us to provide the funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services to bring more excellent webinars to you. So please take some time at the end of today to fill that survey out. Um, and I'm gonna stop my share here and I'm, inviting you all to turn on your cameras today. I know with Jen, like we usually kind of um, just focus on her, but we're gonna have some opportunities to interact with her. At the top of your, your screen, um, there is a speaker view option. And if you wanna go out of the gallery view and see Jennifer a little bit bigger, you can click on that speaker view in the upper right hand corner of your screen. So without further ado, Jen, I'm going to pass it over to you as we imagine our story uh, this summer with puppets and props. All right, great. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here this morning. This was an interesting setup, you guys. <laughs> There's props and stuff all around me, and I tried to keep it in a, a range where I can grab everything. I may disappear at times to get some things off of the floor. So it's wonderful to see all your faces. Usually we do these webinars where I can't see you. That's been really interesting. But today, um, because we're gonna be doing some puppets and props together, um, I would like to see you just to kind of monitor how things are going out there for you. If I get to a point where you need to ask a question, um, if you go to um, uh, participants on the bottom part of your screen, it'll show you some choices and one of those choices of response is to be able to raise your hand. So Kathy, if you'll help me monitor those as I get rolling, if there's a hand raise, will you let me know? Yes, and just to note, it looks like our version doesn't have the raise your hand, but we have reactions, um, but it's best well, just maybe put a thumbs up to let me know that you have to ask a question. Yeah, or they can pop in the chat. Okay, I'll yep. monitor the chat. Or in the chat, right, exactly. All right, um, Kathy, is there a way that, now let me see if I can do this. May, I'll pin me to make me a little bigger so I can see what I'm doing with all of you. There we go, all right. So, um, this morning is all about uh, virtual puppets and props. <laughs> so we've all been at home and I know that summer reading programming is still up in the air for a lot of libraries. I know that I've been getting cancellations for my 52 contracts this summer, which is breaking my heart. And I know you're making those decisions and much of what you're probably thinking about doing is going on virtually and trying to provide your patrons with programming that's still going to be valuable and inspiring. So I hope today will help you do that this summer, um, but I hope even more that we're all live together this summer at some point, but we just don't know, do we? So I wanna tell you that here in Traverse City, Michigan this morning, we're having a snowstorm. Mm. Woke up to snow on the grass and snow on the gardens and snow on the cabbage this morning. So we are gonna do a snow story for our second story today in honor of the Northern snowstorm. So let's get busy. Um, if you gathered materials, great. Um, you can do some of the activities with me today. If you didn't gather those materials, it's way okay. Um, you can watch this recording later and you can gather your materials knowing which project you're gonna try and turn on the recording and do it with me at a later time. Either way is just fine, all right? So we're gonna start today with two paper cut stories. And I love the paper cut stories, one, because you sure don't have to go out to the store to gather supplies. 
And if you didn't have paper at home, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not able to go and take my um, cloth bags to the store anymore. So I have a stack now of those paper brown bags, great source of paper, right? Cut those bags open and get those really big pieces of paper that you can work with, right? If you don't have paper at home. But if you did this um, and you gathered some paper, um, I asked you to gather a piece that was a little bit larger than 16 by 18. If you don't have that, everybody, please just use a piece of copy paper or a piece of loose leaf paper to learn how to make the folds and the cuts in this story. And I will be modeling it for you the way that you would tell it to kids by using the objects that we're going to make out of this paper as a hat. All right. So I'll model it that way for you. But if you just have a small piece of paper, it's a lot easier to learn this story and learn the folds and learn the cuts if you start with a smaller piece of paper. Totally up to you. Okay, you ready to get rolling? All right. We're going to imagine our story, ladies and gentlemen, and this is just a beautiful way to do it. You have probably seen this paper cut story before, but not in the version that I'm going to share with you today. This comes from my dear friend and sister of choice, Tina Brody. She's one of the Wonder Weavers in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and one of my colleagues in Cygnus Storytelling. And this is Tina's version of this story. So I want you to take that piece of paper that I asked you to get, and I want you to fold it. Like mine's really big, right? I want you to fold it in half and make sure that crease is really good, all right? So we're gonna work on that crease a little bit. And then fold that piece of paper in half again and kind of give that crease a little bit of pressure, all right? So we have four squares when we start this. But I'd like you to fold that big piece of paper in half to start this story. So here's the big version with four squares. You're gonna fold it in half to start this story. So it looks like this. And if you're working with a small piece of paper, that's just fine, all right? One day, I had been in the house for a long time because of the coronavirus. That day, my mom said, why don't you go outside and play a little bit? but keep your distance from anybody who's out there. I said, okay, mom. And I took a piece of paper outside with me because I thought I would make a paper airplane. So I started to fold my paper the way I usually do when I make an airplane, all right, you guys? So this corner down to the middle crease and flatten it out, okay? Do the same with the other corner fold it down to the middle crease like we would if we're making a paper airplane, right? This, and flatten it out, all right? So I started to make that paper airplane when all of a sudden I imagined my favorite storybook character, Peter Pan. So I decided to be Peter Pan that day, okay? Next step, and this is so hard to do standing up, you guys, but take the the bottom flap and move it up so it starts looking like a hat, right? And fold it. Okay, that's one side. Now flip it over and do the same thing. Take that bottom flap and flip it up. So it looks like a hat. All right, any questions out there yet, Kath? Okay, so. I took my hat and that day I decided that I was gonna be Peter Pan. Now I know the story of Peter Pan really well. I know that Peter Pan lived in Never Never Land with all the lost children. And who did Peter Pan have to watch out for? You can chat it if you want. Or Kathy, you can help me out. Sorry, I'm typing right. at the same time. Right. Um, <laughs> you need to look out for the pirate. Look out for you guys. Hook. Captain Hook. So I yeah. want you to get your hooks up, get your <laughs> up, and I want to hear a good pirate arg. 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 <laughs> now let's shiver our timbers. Shiver our timbers. <laughs> now we're going to say yo ho ho and a glass of milk. Let's do yo -ho -ho. it. Yo ho ho and a glass of milk. Well, all of a sudden, I heard Tinkerbell whisper in my ear. And Tinkerbell said, you know, if you think happy thoughts, you can fly. And all of a sudden I realized I didn't need my paper airplane anymore. So I started to think happy thoughts like hugging my mom, playing with my friends again, 
eating ice cream for breakfast. And all of a sudden, I could fly. Let's fly, everybody. So this is the part in a story time where you let them fly around the room so they get the wiggles out, right? So I flew for a while, but all of a sudden, it started to rain. And the rain was coming down so hard, I realized I better change my hat into a rain hat. I put on my raincoat, I pulled on my galoshes, and I went outside to look for ginormous puddles. Now, what do we do when we find a puddle? We jump in them, don't we? So we're going to go and jump and splash in the puddles. Jump in <laughs> and splash in. We played in the rain for so long that we were totally soaking wet. But then I heard a sound coming down the street. It sounded like this. It was a great big red fire truck. And I thought if there was going to be a fire, they need a chief. And so I took my hat off. All right, next one, you guys. You're going to take one side of it and flip it all the way up. We're making a fire chief hat, right? So it should look like this. So you just took one side and flipped it up. So it should look like a fire chief's hat. So I put on my fire chief's hat and I went to go help put out that fire. Now it takes a lot of people to put out a big fire. So I want you to grab your big fire hoses. You got them? Let's put the fire out. Wow, that was a big job. Well, we forgot to turn our hoses off when we laid them down. And all of a sudden I looked out and there was a river flowing down my road. Well, I thought if there's a river flowing down my road, I better get a boat, right? So take it off. I'm gonna fold the other side down like we did for the fire hat. So it looks like a triangle now, right? And here's kind of the weird part. We have to kind of transform it into a square. So I'm sticking my hand inside and I'm folding it to the side. So let me do that again. All right, so we had the, the chief's hat. We folded down the other side of it. Put your hand inside, spread it out and fold it again so that it looks more like a square. That's kind of a hard one, isn't it? I'm gonna do that one again. We had the fire hat, right, fire chief? We fold it up the other side so it looks like a triangle. Put your hand inside that, like the hat again, pull it out to the side so it's a square. Any hands up out there, Kathy? I can't see. All right. You're good. There was a question. There was a question. I can't see what it was. Jane Lynch had a question. Can you unmute her, please? You okay? Okay, Jane, go ahead. No, I was just doing a thumbs up. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. So we need a boat, and we have folded this in a square. You'll notice that these two corners are kind of loose. Pull them out, and it creates a boat. All right, so let's do that again. Top two corners are kind of loose. Pull them out, and it makes a boat. So we got inside, I got inside that boat. I shouldn't say we during this coronavirus. All right, I got inside that boat, and I started to flow down the river, down my road. All of a sudden, there was a waterfall up ahead, and my boat went down and down and over that waterfall and flowed right out to the ocean. I started to look around, couldn't believe that I was in the ocean. And what do we need to look for if we're in the ocean? Any ideas out there? Kids will say Captain Hook from the, from the previous part. They'll say whales, sharks, I've heard the Titanic. So we flowed out into the ocean when all of a sudden, off on the horizon, a storm started to brew. And that storm got stronger and stronger until finally the wind blew so hard, it blew off the top of my boat. You can rip it or cut it, all right? So we're cutting off the top part of the boat that's inside. 
but off the top part of the boat. The wind turned my boat around and around until finally there were some rocks up ahead and the bow of my boat hit those rocks. We're gonna cut off the bow of the boat. Uh oh. Yep. When the bow hit the rocks, it spun my boat around and the stern of my boat hit those rocks and the stern broke off. Now, if I was in a boat without a top or a bow or a stern, what would happen to my boat? Right? <laughs> it sunk all the way down to the bottom of the ocean, but I have an imagination. And while I was down on the bottom of the ocean, wondering what to do, I turned my boat into a life jacket. <laughs> so you open it all up again, right? I, I, and it can be a life jacket with, you know, the wings that they wear in the water to be safe, right? I turned my boat into a life jacket. I put that life jacket on. I swam all the way up to the surface of the water. When I got out, I dried off. I reached into my pocket for my keys and I drove away in my Chevy truck. <laughs> That's a nice Michigan ending. <laughs> That's a Michigan adaptation, that's right. So this is a, a great story for Imagine Your Story, and you can change it up whatever way you want. Um, the way that my friend Tina did, she has quite an imagination. So that's a paper cut story. The words to that story or the narration is in the packet that I sent you, your handout. So it's all there for you to practice and then change it up whatever way you want, right? That's what's so great about imagining our story, right? All right. So because of the snowstorm this morning, <laughs> we're going to do a snowflake paper cut story next. And, and Jen, so before, you, before yep. you transition to that, just a note that um, that story Jen just did does work with 8 by 11 paper or the grocery bag idea where you cut out a bigger piece. Um, and the recording will be sent to everybody today. So I know some people lost, like I lost track myself. You can go back and watch it and learn it again. Right. So yeah, I knew that that would be a hard one to learn, but yes, know that you have the recording and you'll be able to stop me and fold and stop me again, right? And mute me, that'd be good. No. <laughs> you can stop me and, and then do that. But yes, you can tell this story by just using a small piece of paper and you don't have to put the hats on. You can just show the kids in the camera or when we're back in the library with them in front of you, what those shapes look like. You don't have to actually wear the hat. Tina said that sometimes she brings a kid up who's feeling courageous and brave and puts the hat on that kid and lets them do that, lets them you know, wear the hat and the life jacket and all of that. So you know that we adapt every story that we learn to our own needs and our own uses, but you can do it with a small piece of paper. And I would recommend you practice with that because it gets a little cumbersome using the bigger pieces. All right. So the same is true for this next one. You can use a small piece of paper if you want. I'm going to use a large one so I can show you the story. But as you follow, and this one's not as hard, not so many folds, okay? And it's called The Family Who Lived in a Snowflake. And you have the words to this story in your handout already. So start with that paper again, that, that big piece of paper or a little one, right? And fold it once and fold it twice so that it's a smaller square. Now, if you remember making snowflakes with kids or when we were little, we needed to end up with like a, a, a ice cream cone shape or a, a race car shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it. I should do it up again, hang on. Adaptation. So I'm gonna fold it down into a triangle. And smooth it out, all right? And then we're gonna fold it into a triangle one more time. So like this. It's gonna have a longer tail on it, I'll show you. It has a longer tail, but you can just cut that tail off. We're not really gonna need most of it, so you can cut that tail off. Or you can leave it on. So it's gonna end up looking like an ice cream cone or a race car, and what you did from the big square was you folded it once into a triangle, folded it twice into that triangle so it looks like this. 
We okay out there? Okay. Again, know that you'll be able to watch this again, so don't feel panicky. Okay. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest of this one, but you have the longer version in your packet, right? Once there was a family. They were a really happy family. In that family, there was a mother. They called her mother. In that family, there was a father, and they called him father. In that family, there was a brother, and they called him brother. And of course, there was an older sister, and guess what they called her? Mm -hmm. They called her sister. Now, mom was going to have a baby, and the family was growing. And dad decided, since the family was growing, he wanted to make a bigger house for them. Now, father had never made a house before, and he wasn't quite sure how to do it. But he was going to try his best. And so he gathered all his tools, and for days and weeks, he hammered. So we're going to use it for that. Hammered, and he sawed, and he nailed. And the kids can do this with you. Hammered and he sawed and he nailed until finally weeks later the house was finished and it looked just like this it was the strangest shaped house that anyone had ever seen well he gathered the family to come see the new house and they stood outside of it and mother said honey that's a beautiful house brother said dad we're gonna live in a race car sister said dad that's the strangest house i've ever seen and then they all looked up and said how do we get in now, dad forgot to put something very important on the house. What did he forget? He forgot the door. So dad got out his saw and he cut, and this was the first cut. He cut a door. Watch your fingers on this, right? We don't want to model blood, right? Hey, Careful Jen, with so scissors, right? Yes. the fold is up. Is the fold up? So it, the, the, the sloping is part of the race car is on the top. Okay. Does that make sense? And the folds are here. So this is not, this is the crease. And that's where all the folds are. So it should look like a race car with the slope down here, like a nose, like a nose, okay? So he cut a door in the house and the family ran in and they ran all the way through the house to see what it looked like. And they all came back out the door and sister said, we can't see outside of our house, dad. What did father forget to give the house? windows right so he asked brother what kind of window he wanted and brother said i want a long skinny window the game goes from the floor to the ceiling so just for brother dad cut a long skinny window that went from the floor to the ceiling he asked sister what kind of window she wanted and sister wanted the exact opposite of brother she said i want a long skinny window that goes from wall to wall so dad took his saw and cut a window for sister that went from wall to wall. He asked mother what kind of window she wanted and she said, oh honey, I've always dreamt about having a skylight in the roof of a house. So father risked his life and he climbed all the way up on the roof and just for mother, he cut a skylight and it's a half a moon shape, half a moon shape on the top of the house. Well, they moved into their new house and everybody loved it. And it was weeks before the baby was born when one night, father and mother came home from work. This was pre-COVID. And father and sister came home from school. Right? And they had dinner and then they went into the living room and brother was reached over to turn the TV on. And father said, we're not gonna watch TV tonight. Brother said, what? Father said, we're not gonna watch TV tonight. Sister said, what? Father said, I have a new idea. We're going to lay down on the living room floor. Mom's going to make a bowl of popcorn. We're going to put it in the middle and we're going to tell stories while we look up through the skylight and the roof. And the whole family said, what? But father said, please try it. I think you're going to like it. So that night they lay down in the living room. They looked up through the skylight. Dad told stories about space aliens and sister hoped that they would come and take brother. <laughs> Mom told stories about how she got in trouble when she was young. Sister really liked that. Well, one night before the baby was born, dad came home with a box and he said to brother and sister, we're going to have a new baby soon. I wanted to get you something special. Guess what's in the box? Brother said, what do you think it is? Sister said, I don't know. What do you think it is? Brother said, I don't know. What do you think it is? 
And then they heard a sound coming out of that box that let them know what dad had brought home. It sounded like this. It was a puppy. They opened that box and sister picked the puppy up and it licked her face and she said, ew, yuck, puppy goo. Brother picked the puppy up and it chewed on his ear. Urgh, and brother said, ow. And they named their puppy, Puppy. Now it was sister's job to let puppy out the door when he had to go to the bathroom. And it was brother's job to let that puppy back in. And you know puppies, sister let him out, brother let him in sister let them out until they got really tired of that. And so brother said, dad, we live in such a strange house anyway. Can we cut a doggy door at the bottom of the house so puppy can go in and out? And so dad went down to the very bottom of the house and cut a doggy door so puppy could go in and out. Now it was weeks before the baby was born when one night they came home from school they came home from work and didn't turn the TV on at all. They laid down on the floor of the living room. Mom made popcorn. Puppy was sleeping on brother's head. Yep. And they started to tell stories that night. And dad was continuing the space aliens. And that night, they were going to land on the front lawn. Mom told another story about how she got in trouble when she was young. When all of a sudden, brother looked up through the skylight and said, what is that? Sister said, what? Brother said, there's something falling from the sky. Sister said, that's a whole different story. Brother said, no, look. And indeed, there were great big objects falling out of the sky, and it wasn't an alien spaceship. They put on their hats and their coats and their boots and their mittens and ran outside to see what it was that was falling out of the sky. And when they looked up, they saw Great big snowflakes falling down out of the sky. It snowed and it snowed all night long. And in the morning, they got their toboggans and sledded off the roof of their house all morning long. And that's a story called The Family Who Lived in a Snowflake. So in honor of the snow on the ground today, <laughs> we probably won't use this one until you know next winter, but put that one in your files in your back pocket or when it snows again. And up here, we'll probably be telling it until June, to tell you the truth. Well, but and it's imagine your story. So you can, right. imagine you can imagine snow in summer. Snowing in the summertime, the world's so strange, who knows what's gonna happen, right? All right, so two paper cut stories. All righty, so we're gonna move on now. And um, I'm a big one on sock puppets, and I'm sure you've made them before too, right? So I'm gonna do a little bit of instruction on a simple sock puppet that you can make at home without using a whole lot. But I've made a lot of sock puppets over the years. I have sock puppets for every character in the mitten, the Hungry Caterpillar, right? These are my buddies Sniggle and Snaggle. Um, I'm not gonna tell that story today, but the words to that story are in your handouts. And if you go into the archives, on the Library of Michigan webpage, you'll find that there are now, there's 13 other webinars that I've done for best story time practices. And I have done Sniggle and Snaggle in the 2017 webinars. So you can see that one again, but I am gonna show you the puppets. And then I'm gonna show you a simple way today to make one. And if you have gathered a sock today or any craft supplies, you can do this with me, okay? So let me show you these guys. Sniggle and Snaggle is a story that I've been telling for years and years. This pair of socks used to be my nephew Nathan's pair of soccer socks when he played in high school. And when he was done playing, he was on the green and white team. I knew I wanted to make snake puppets and I asked him if I could have his socks. Now there are um, all kinds of different dollar store socks that we can go get, right? And ones that when I get to the Hungry Caterpillar, ones out there that are just fabulous for the Hungry Caterpillar. But I also save my old socks, right? This is an old green wool sock that I grabbed out of my husband's drawer, actually. The other one had a hole in the toe. So I'm gonna use this one today. And it's a great way to recycle socks that you're not gonna wear any longer. You can cover up the holes with craft materials, right? So Sniggle and Snaggle are my two snake puppets. 
and I tell a story about how they visit each other and they are best friends and they use their tongues. But you can tell that I didn't put all that much decoration on them. You really don't have to. You will give your puppets a personality and the story will give those puppets the action, right? So um, here's how it works when you put them on and then I'll show you how to make one. But I will show you the hungry caterpillar first. So with the snake puppets, I always pull them all the way up my arm, right? And the toes are stuffed, stuffed in for the mouth. I actually put ping pong balls inside the snake puppet's um, sock to make their eyes stick up a little higher, okay? You can do that with fuzzy balls or cotton balls, but it gives them a different uh, personality if their eyeballs are up like that, so you can do that. And it's just a matter of using them to do different things, right? So Sniggle and Snaggle are two of my dearest friends. Um, eyelashes on one are a little longer, than the other so that I can go from female to male on those puppets just subtly. I don't, I generally don't really pay attention to that, but you can if you want to, all right? So those are um, two that I started with. When I got into the Hungry Caterpillar, and Kathy, you can um, um, maybe show us yours as well. Kathy has a great one of this. Again, another green sock, and you know we go to Etsy, don't we? Mm -hmm. We go to Pinterest, don't we, <laughs> right, to get those ideas. I saw a pattern for this sock puppet on um, Etsy, actually. It was a, somebody had made one, and I just copied what they had done. So let's put the Hungry Caterpillar on and see what he looks like. Now, you don't have to make him look exactly like the book, but sometimes it's good for kids if you're going to read the book first and then have that puppet to act it out and play with them with this story, then you can make your Hungry Caterpillar look like the one that Eric Carle created for that book, right? So purple antenna, right? Red face. It's, I really patterned him quite after that. I decorated the back more caterpillary with... Um, sparkly uh, fuzzy sticks and, and little fuzzy balls and just glued those on. You can decorate any way you want. And as I said, you don't have to decorate at all if you go to the dollar store and get socks that look caterpillary. You know what I mean? Even the fuzzy ones, like the slipper socks that are kind of striped, they make incredible caterpillars because they're already kind of fuzzy, you know, and striped. And so um, this is awesome for, for doing it um, because it's a dollar for two. So you've got your socks to make either Sniggler or Snaggler or whatever you want to make. So with the Hungry Caterpillar, and I'm just going to show you this so you know how this can be used in a little bit of an extension, and then we're going to make a puppet. With the Hungry Caterpillar, I start that story with the leaf where the egg is. And you guys know the story of the Hungry Caterpillar, or you can go read that. And out of that egg hatches the caterpillar, right? And the caterpillar's hungry and goes looking for things to eat. And he says, oh, I'm really hungry. Well, I just cut out a simple felt, right? All the fruits that the caterpillar goes through. I left out the junk food in my version. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> I don't have them go eating through donuts and cake and all of that. We just do the really healthy fruit stuff in my version, but you can make these for all of it. And the kids in the audience hold the fruit and the caterpillar goes and says, ooh, I'm really hungry. And they put it over the caterpillar's head. And then the caterpillar says, yum, yum, thank you very much. And goes to sleep, but the next morning wakes up hung hungry, two pairs. And you can hand them out, right, to everybody in the audience, or virtually, you're going to have to hold them, right? And he eats the two pears. Oh, I'm really hungry. Yum, yum. Thank you very much. And the story goes on to eating through three plums. And it's a great counting story, too. Like you can count them, one, two, three, and have the caterpillar eat them. Four strawberries. Again, just simple felt cutouts with leaves glued on the top. And I'm doing this quickly because of all the ideas I want to share with you today. But again, there's four of them. So one, two, three, four, where it's a great counting. And through, yum, yum, I'm still hungry, five oranges. And the caterpillar eats through the five oranges. In the story, he eats through one more leaf. And then he feels satisfied and he goes to sleep. Now watch, take the whole thing, fold it into the puppet. So it's smaller and out of some um, fuzzy material, I just made a cocoon. 
in the bottom of this cocoon, there's a butterfly, right? So I stuffed the whole caterpillar into that cocoon and he goes to sleep. But when he comes back out again, he is transformed, right? So here's the cocoon, caterpillar's inside with all that fruit. And when he comes back out again, or she comes back out again, she comes back out as a butterfly. This came from the dollar store. I put an uh, antenna on it, but this came from, a, it was a little girl's headband at the dollar store, and I just took the butterfly off of it, right? I put a, a, I put a glove finger that I cut off there so I could put it on my finger and the butterfly flies away. Okay, so sock puppets are wonderful. And you know, when I'm with families and I'm doing family nights, we will make sock puppets together. They will create some character and then they go home and send that character on adventures and use their imagination to imagine all the stories they can using their own puppet. So let's make a simple one, shall we? So if you have a sock, grab it. If you don't, you can just watch again. You can watch this later, grab your supplies, do it at your own pace. Right, but I want to give you the idea. So here's the sock, right? You put it on your hand. The heel ends up being the place for the eyes or the top of the head. I take my fingers and stuff the toes as back as far as I can. Now, when I've gotten really creative with this, I have stitched around here so that the mouth stays in and then stitched around here with a needle and a thread. You can do it with a glue gun. You can do it with a stapler, but you gotta be careful later, right? So you can start seeing that there's a character emerging with a mouth and a place for eyes, okay? So um, I'm just gonna do the simple one with you and show you how easy it is to create this. I got my tacky glue, right? I still had some, <laughs> I didn't have to go to the store to get it. And I cut out two pink cheeks. So I'm just gonna put some glue on those cheeks and I'm gonna glue them on either side of my sock puppet's face. So one here. And one on the other side. Can you guys see this? Let me stand up here. So two cheeks. And now Jen, I'm gonna give my, yep. I didn't have any glue or construction paper for some reason in my house. So I'm right. using stickers from my tomatoes from my oh, program. Awesome. Awesome. Kathy, do you want to show that? I want to see it. So I'm going to go back to gallery view. Do you want to show that? You can put yourself on speaker view if you want. It's kind of hard to see, but I'll pull it up. Yeah. So I have here tape, right? We didn't have all this stuff at home right now stapler. Um, I've got some Velcro with sticky backs. So whatever you have, try and, and you can use tape for these if you're home and you don't have the glue and everything. Let's see, Kath. There, it's hard to see because I have a tan sock and they're okay. kind of tan stickers. All right, so you put <laughs> stickers on there. Yeah. So today, you guys, um, I do have googly eyes because I've got like a storehouse of craft supplies, right? But buttons, for eyes and you can sew those on or glue those on. I'm gonna glue them on right now with the tacky glue, which is awesome. Or if you have a glue gun, you know, that, that makes it a lot easier too, but we don't all have this stuff at home right now. Hang on a second. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take my buttons and I'm gonna put a little tacky on there and make button eyes. I'll show it to you in a second here. All right, so a personality starting to form. I had some felt, so I cut out a tongue and I'm gonna put that tongue right in the back of the sock where I pushed in the toes. A little bit of tacky glue. You can also sew it on, right? Needle and thread takes a little longer, but boy, your puppets last longer when you do it that way. So a tongue and then if I wanted to, I could put eyelashes on, right? So I cut some eyelashes out of, out of felt and could put those on, curve them around the eye if you want to like that. So sky's the limit on what you turn your sock puppets into, but they're really wonderful. And you know what, it's, when you watch those little ones make their own sock puppets and you give them some cutouts and an easy way to glue that on and they create a character, you can bet that they're gonna use their imaginations and imagine their own stories with that sock puppet. 
So I hope you'll, you'll use those as a simple way to share with little ones, especially if we're home this summer and we're doing this virtually, right? Any questions out there? All right. So I'm going to put him up there, let his eyeballs dry. And um, we are going to go on to other things that you can do with the hungry caterpillar. Okay. So that story is a, a really popular one. And we're coming into the spring season. And I've seen a few butterflies already, but it wasn't snowing out a few weeks ago. And so a few other ways to share the hungry caterpillar with little ones when you want to extend that story time, help them start developing those motor skills that are going to lead to reading and writing skills later on, right? So one of the things that I love to make is the butterfly, and I'm sure you've seen these, that comes out of the cocoon. Right? So I asked you if you had um, clothespins to grab those, right? And I wanna show you how I did this without any glue at all, okay? So these are coffee filters, right? And you can use any paper that you want, tissue paper, you can use um, copy paper, but I cut it into a circle. All right, um, coffee filters work really great for this activity because what I did, what the little ones will do is take watercolor paint and just paint around the outside what they perceive to be butterfly colors, right? So brushes or those spongy brushes and they paint around the outside with some watercolor paints. I'm gonna take that coffee filter and start folding it back and forth. So back and forth back and forth, back and forth until it's all folded up, right? And turn it sideways and take the clothespin and pinch the middle way down in the clothespin. So the wings are sideways, way down in the clothespin. Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot one step. You're gonna put the antenna in first, sorry. So that goes in first. So the antenna are down in the clothespin. The coffee filter goes in second, sideways. And when it's all pinched together, you open up the wings that they've painted to make the butterfly. Okay, so no glue necessary at all to do this one, right? A little bit of paint, coffee filters or paper, clothespin, and antenna for the butterfly and they can fly away with their butterfly. You can go as far as making a face on it. And I even had ready today um, some beads if you wanted to put, if you do wanna get glue out and put a head on top of that butterfly like this, you could. But I think they're cute just like this and then a Sharpie marker, right? To draw the face on the butterfly, all right? So any questions on that one? So the watercolor is really fun. It's just a lovely way to introduce those real little ones to the watercolor concept and see how beautiful it is to blend those colors. You may have seen how you can use coffee filters to do tie dye with Sharpie markers. And you do the Sharpie around it, you twist it up, do the Sharpie around it and then spray it with water and it bleeds. And then you can let those dry. If you're gonna do this on a Hungry Caterpillar story time, then you might wanna have them paint their coffee filters or their circles first, right? Let them dry. And you might even hang them up. I always like to hang the butterflies up on a clothesline in the library. So all their butterflies are flying through the library. But you could hang those coffee filters up on the clothesline, let them dry. And after you explore the hungry caterpillar and read the book and act and play, and play it out, come back and finish their butterflies so they can take the butterfly home with them or hang it up in the library, okay? So that's one extension of the Hungry Caterpillar. I want to show you what um, I worked with a group at our Career Tech Center. They were high school students who think they want to either be librarians or early childhood educators. And I gave them the supplies and said, come up with something with the Hungry Caterpillar. And they came up with two that I'd like to show you. So we just had fuzzy balls and we had um, fuzzy sticks, right? They made Hungry Caterpillars to put on their computers. <laughs> So this one, and I'm sure you've seen these, although I can't find them in the store. You have to order them online. They are fuzzy balls that have a hole through them, like a bead. Have you guys seen those? Awesome. So you have to look online, and I can't even tell you what company has them, but fuzzy balls, 
with a hole or fuzzy ball beads, right? So you can just take those fuzzy balls with that are beads, put them over the pipe cleaner, glue on googly eyes, give it an antenna, and it can sit, right? It can sit anywhere. They can carry it home with them, right? And so this is a really lovely one for the little ones who want to take the hungry caterpillar home and see what he's going to eat and use their imaginations when they get home. So that was one version of it. Um, this was one that the other student who didn't have the beads, she just glued and wrapped the fuzzy balls around a fuzzy stick and did exactly the same thing. So you don't have to have the beads to do those little caterpillars. And here was another wonderful one that came out of that group. They were amazing. So a fuzzy stick, any kind that you want. She bent the top into two antenna like this wrapped the fuzzy stick around that and kept the antenna facing up and then took green wooden beads and just put them on the fuzzy stick, right? One, two, and if you want that, you can um, have the, the front of the face be the green ball and then paint it red like the one Oop, that, that bead didn't have a hole all the way through it. Here we go. You're getting the idea, right? So these green beads are at, um, I got them at Joann's, I think. Could be Joann's or Michael's, my two go-to places up here. Oh, shoot. Hang on. <laughs> And this is an easy one for those little hands that need those motor skills, right? Really, really easy and successful to do this. Just a fuzzy stick. You might have to help them bend the tops a little bit, but they're just stringing beads, right? What great, great motor skills, fine motor skills for them. And then if they wanna um, cut the tail off or swirl the tail, they can also make legs for it. But isn't that adorable? Oh, that's so cute and very easy for those little ones. And then finally, the simplest one, the fingers off of green stretchy gloves. Fingers off of green stretchy gloves. I'm gonna get my tacky glue out again here for two eyes and an antenna. The simplest caterpillar they can take home right there on their finger. So one googly eye. Two googly eyes, antenna. Right? Super cute. Isn't that so cool? I mean, it's just so easy and it's not hard for you to get those supplies together. Googly eyes, cut off the tips of the fingers and then fuzzy sticks for the antenna, right? How cool we're, is that? We're thinking these would be great um, to go kits for the summer if- Absolutely. At Absolutely. the library for them to pick up and take home. Yeah, especially, Kathy, the beads and the fuzzy stick to make that caterpillar. How easy is that to put together? And then these little guys that they can take home on their finger. Can't you see them in the back of the car? Yeah. <laughs> combined with the library. Combined right? with the butterfly instructions. Right. And then right. they could have both. Yep. So Hungry Caterpillar Extensions. Any questions out there? No questions, but this is your 15-minute warning. I hate this. <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go just a little longer, aren't we, Kathy? Okay. So, um, all right. So this one is just to show you, so that I can show you more, and you can mess with this later, okay? And um, again, in all of my webinars, for anybody on today, and all the webinars, if you attend one of these webinars with me, you have lifetime access to me. Okay, so if you want to call, email, you need the words to a song you heard, you forgot the supply list. I try and put them all in the handouts, but sometimes you can't find the handout or you forgot the song. Lifetime access to Jen, call me, email me, Zoom me, and we'll do it again. All right, so that you can learn those songs or talk about any obstacles that you might be having. All right, did anybody grab a spoon today from the supply list that I gave you? If you did, I want to show you what I've done with spoons, paint sticks, and metal spatulas. Now, I need to go and get them off the floor right now, okay? So I'll be right back. Hang on. And while Jen's getting those, I'll remind you that we have uh, another webinar coming up with Jen in uh, two weeks. And next week, we also have STEM in the Kitchen with 
Lori Bone from the Longway Planetarium. So make sure you register on the Library of Michigan website under four libraries. You go to continuing education and you'll see a link to our events calendar to register. All right, Jen, are you ready? Okay. Yep. <laughs> awesome. All right. So you should see my floor, you guys. It's pretty interesting. My husband left the house. <laughs> All right. Spoons. Packages of four, all different sizes at the dollar store for a buck, right? Wooden ones. You'll see packages of plastic ones. I'm the kind of person that stays away from plastic as much as I can, but they're durable and they still take a Sharpie marker and you can still glue things onto those plastic ones, but just a wooden spoon. And you start with just that spoon and give them all the supplies to create a character. And boy, are they gonna use their imagination to imagine a story with that character. So let me show you some of the ones that I've made, my most famous ones, right? Mama bear, Papa bear. I'll get them close so you can see them. Baby bear, All right? So this is foamy, the same stuff, right? Foamy, fuzzy sticks, fuzzy balls, googly eyes, foamy, foamy, glue, right? This is Goldilocks. She has fuzzies for hair, all right? And any character can be made. This was left over from a workshop years ago. Somebody used um, foamy stickies. They were hands for the hair, right? And Sharpie markers. And this was a paper bag for the clown shirt. So that was a clown that got left behind. Am I using that as an example today? So they are awesome ways for you to create puppets easily for the stories that you love to share. Let your little ones or your little ones and their families and caregivers create their own. And you can send them home with this one too, a spoon, a couple of fuzzy sticks, a couple of fuzzies, and maybe a marker, and they can create their own characters, right? So, Go to the dollar store and get those bags. I always clear out the dollar stores around here. So I've gone to them and I make them order more because they know I'm going to be coming in and they put them aside for me because I buy a lot of these. I do a lot of workshops like these. Okay. All right. We're going to, we probably won't be messing with one, but I'll show you what I was going to do. So the other cool, cool thing at the dollar store. Hey Jen, we do fit. have, we have a quick question. Okay. Um, do you like to have the kids create their characters before showing your puppet bears or do you tell the story first? If we're going to make our own, I might do the three bears with them, right? But then when we go to the table, I give them permission to make any kind of wild character they want. So the, the goal is that they use their imaginations to create a different character than the one they saw today. If they want to make a bear, we're not going to stop them from making a bear, right? But if you want to encourage them to use their imaginations to create a brand new character, if there's time at the end of that story time, we all come back and share our characters, give them a name. And then they can send those characters on adventures. Or you could come back the next week and say, what did your character do? Bring your spoons back, right? So there's all different kinds of ways. But if you're somebody who doesn't like to put those ideas in their head first, you certainly could just give them the materials, right? Here's a blank spoon. Here's the eyes. Here's something for hair. I want you to create a brand new character that has never existed before. And I want you to give them a name, okay? So you can do it either way. So these are awesome. Right? So you can, you can, you can do this in a couple of different ways. Since we're home right now and we can't go to the store for things, tape is a really good way to do this. You just put tape on the back of that spatula. What I've come to do is use those magnets that are in the pack and the office supply for business cards. And I put those magnets on the back of any character that might be in the story and check it out, right? So with the character changes, or you have more than one character, you can change those characters out just by pulling them off of the spatula, right? So one story that I shared in another webinar, gosh, I can't tell you what title of it, was Thomas's snowsuit, right? Where you have the teacher, okay, let me do this backwards, and Thomas's snowsuit, you have the principal. 
So this is a tongue depressor with a magnet. It's going on the back of the spoon. And I actually, I don't know if this copyright problem, but I went into the book and copied the characters out and then cut them out, right? So there's the teacher, the actual characters from the book. So if you read Thomas's snowsuit, um, you could then act this out with the kids. And here's Thomas. <laughs> yeah, sure, I can hold all of these. And here's Thomas. Now, if you know the story, you know that they're trying to get Thomas to put a snowsuit on, and he wrestles first with the teacher, right? She wants him to put it on. Actually, he wrestles with his mother, and she puts a snowsuit on, but he hates a snowsuit. He wrestles with the teacher, and when they get done wrestling, check it out, the teacher's wearing the snowsuit, and Thomas has on the teacher's dress, right? And then the principal comes in and wants to know what's going on in there, and they wrestle around, and the principal ends up with the teacher's dress, and the teacher ends up with the principal's suit, right? So it's just a wonderful, easy way with magnets and a spatula and some characters to share stories with your kids. Great way to do puppets, okay? So let me put those away and show you one more. So, I have often gone to the paint store here in town and said, can you give me a pile of paint sticks? Because little ones can grab these very easily, right? When we did um, the Parade of Elephants in a webinar earlier this winter, I used it for the Parade of Elephants. In the past, I have put every character from the mitten on a paint stick. These are printable. Um, with permission by Jan Bratt, they're printable when you search the mitten, okay? So I've put them all on, I hand them out into the audience, I have a giant mitten, and when that animal moves into the mitten, that little one comes up and puts their animal into the mitten, and they can hold it on their paint stick, they love these. So paint sticks are another great way to make puppets very easily, right? With um, supplies that are either around, and it's okay if they're dirty paint sticks, right? You can go out in the garage and see if you have any and start making puppets with paint sticks, metal spatulas, or the wooden spoons, right? Okay, any questions out there? No questions. All right, I was gonna make one with the wooden spoon, but I think you get the idea. And again, get a hold of me if you wanna do that together. I'll do it with you separately. Now that we have Zoom technology, I think we're probably gonna be using that from now on, right? To share with each other. It's awesome. So one more for today. Is that gonna work, Kath? Over five minutes. This will work. This is a quickie, okay? If you have, I, I had to do this one, you guys. If you have a toilet paper roll, rock on, right? Grab it. I couldn't go today without using the toilet paper rolls because of the whole issue that we are afraid that we're going to run out of toilet paper. So grab a toilet paper roll and I'm going to screen share, but you know, as well as I do, we go to the internet and search for ideas. So let me screen share this one with you. Can you see them? Kathy, is that visible? Mm -hmm. All right. So just take a look at all those cute ideas. We've got a bumblebee, we've got a butterfly, we have a ladybug, and all kinds of different versions or ways of doing that. So we're gonna do the ladybug today and show you a quick way to do that. Okay, so toilet paper rolls, you know, like infinite number of ideas. If you gave a group of kids toilet paper rolls, and all of these supplies that we've been working with today, you know they're gonna come up with awesome things, right? They're also really great finger puppets, aren't they, right? Or you could put a spoon inside of that, right? Or a paint stick inside of that. So we're gonna do a ladybug today, but I was messing around with um, milk crates and milk cartons, and check it out, look what an owl or a mouse could be. This is the one end of an egg crate. And I just went like this today. I didn't make it yet. This is what I'm going to make now. But um, I mean, later on today, but it could be a mouse. It could be an owl. So using our imagination has become even more key now that we've gone through the coronavirus. But what a great lead in to our summer reading programming, whether we're live or virtual, we're going to be using our imaginations, aren't we? We're going to be imagining our stories. So lady butt, here's what I did. Toilet paper roll. I had this in my bag. It's black foamy paper with a sticky on the back, right? So I cut a piece out of that and I'm gonna take the sticky off the back and I'm gonna wrap 
my toilet paper roll. And I cut it long enough to overlap just a little bit for the black body of the ladybug, okay? So sticky, wrap around, how easy, right? We gotta look for those easy things. If you have foamy, we could use glue, we could use tape, but it's, if it's already got that sticky back, oh my, this is so much more easy and successful for those little ones. They just wrap it around that too, all right? So out of construction paper, I'm gonna cut out two half circles for the wings. Black Sharpie marker, dots wherever you want it. And we can talk about ladybugs and how many dots they have and what it means. So I'm just drawing dots on the wings. Tape or glue, I'm gonna use my tacky glue because that's what I have today. And I'm gonna make a triangle of glue. One wing here. Come on, tacky glue, sorry. One wing on one side, one wing on the other. Oops, I should have put those down a little bit lower and I'll show you why here in a second. Okay, I have from Michael's, and you can order these, a roll of eyeball stickers. And there's lots of different types of eyeballs, so they get to choose what kind of eyeballs they want. And if they want their ladybug to have two different eyeballs, they can do that too. So I'm gonna pick some eyeballs. And those go at the very top of the tube. Sorry, I'm going fast, right? I'm sorry. Okay. And another eyeball, I'm gonna make them different. Okay. And then another fuzzy stick for the antenna on the ladybug, like this. Little tacky glue inside, right behind the eyeballs. Insta ladybug, right? How cute. And so um, it's with the paper, the toilet paper rolls, you know it's infinite, right? So with the garden season coming on and spring coming on, we can teach them about those wonderful helpers in the garden. This ladybug's name is Lou. You know that song, hey lucky, lucky lady, hey lucky ladybug. Hey, lucky, lucky lady. Hey, ladybug named Lou, right? So you can make a ladybug and sing that song and talk about the helpers in the garden. Okay, so toilet paper rolls, had to give them their time today, right? How are we doing, Kath? We're there, aren't we? Yeah, all right. So um, infinite number of ideas for being at home and trying to be creative. You know what, everybody? I know that these have been really tough times and it's been really hard to be home. I miss kids so much that it aches in my body not being with children right now. Like I actually feel like I'm less of a human because I'm not around kids right now. But what this time has given us are some gifts. And one of the things that I'm seeing all over is creativity and imagination. So it's allowed us to think differently when we don't have everything at our fingertips we have to think about what we could use instead, right? And when we don't have everything in front of us or we can't go to the store and buy it, well, maybe we can make it. So I hope today has inspired you to go to your imagination and use what's around you, create puppets and props that are gonna help our little ones still experience and imagine their story, even though our summer might end up being kind of virtual this year. I'm doing all kinds of virtual programs this summer, so if you're interested, get a hold of me. Some of the libraries have canceled, some of them are going for it, and I'm ready to be there for you and your patrons virtually this summer, okay? Thank you for coming. Get a hold of me if you need to have any questions answered or you wanna talk about any of these ideas. Okay? Thank you, Jen. Thank you, you guys. Um, before everybody goes, uh, please don't forget to copy that survey, copy the links to the handouts. Um, I know Jen mentioned a show and tell. If you brought a puppet or a prop with you, 
we can go out to gallery view uh, in the right hand upper corner you exit speaker view and go to a gallery view and i see okay. julie's ready julie's right. got something Let's do it i'm sorry i'm I gonna un about that All julie right. i unmuted you oh okay, okay. i am on you are okay. on because i see your you have something if you're ready Oh, I was so excited. I told mom, I was like, oh my gosh, you're not going to do it. I made them. I'm so sorry. I almost forgot that. I am humongous on recycling and crafts and stuff like that. Um, imagine your story. We're doing fairy tales and stuff like that. So I was thinking giant stories and everybody's got pens. And so I thought they could make pen stilts and then they would be giants. And then B5, awesome. and all that stuff. So I had baling twine. And because uh, I got a farm, and that's what we have. So, how did you, I... Julie? How did you okay. um, put the string in? How did you cut the metal? I was so simple. You're not going to believe this. I took a nail and I ha the nail, hammered it in, twisted it around so it was, and then the the string is on the inside. Awesome. And tied a knot. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's I, great. I played two knots. But Yep, or you can tie oh, it. Yeah, it honestly, girls and boys, it took maybe three to five minutes. It really didn't take long. Everybody's got cans. Everybody's got cans, and so that was that's what wonderful. We did. Thank you for sharing, Julie. Does anybody else have something? I can unmute you. Anybody Thanks so much, have Julie. A show and tell? Andrea. Okay, Andrea. I'm unmuting you. Oh. Everyone, um, I'm Andrea. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but I made a pout pout fish um, out of paper plates. Uh, so this is just paint and Google eyes. I used a little brad um, for what looks like his nose, but it's actually to attach two plates together um, so that he can change his emotions. So we talked That's about- so cool. Like, I'm a pout pout fish with yeah. a pout pout face. Yeah. <laughs> You're spreading jury where he's all over the place. I love it. You guys know it. Um, so he becomes a he realizes he's a kiss kiss fish, and he has a um a happy face too. Um, so I thought it would be a good way to talk about emotions. Um, I totally found this on a blog, playground park bench. Um, so not my own idea, but it was super easy. So just two paper plates, little paper, Google eyes. Not so bad. <laughs> oh, Andrea, that's awesome. It could be a wish wish fish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually really jealous. I never thought of that craft when I, mean, I did story times. That's awesome. Yeah. Really Thank good. you. You're welcome. Who else has one? Michelle? No. Does anybody else have one they want to share? Jane has Jane one. Has. So my favorite book or one of my favorites is Muncha Muncha Muncha. And I don't know if you're familiar with it. But, um, so I didn't want to make Mr. McGreeley because I think humans in puppets are a little strange. So I made, I made the bunny rabbit. Oh. Three bunnies in it that eat all his vegetables. So. Is that, that is a so sock? Cute. Is that a sock, Jane? It's just a sock. I took hot glue and tucked his ears down. He looked a little like a cat, so I added a carrot. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Wonderful. So using the sock upright and then pushing the sock down for different yeah, ears. That's a great idea. Great. I love that. And the tail on the back is a great yeah. touch. Fuzzy <laughs> tail on the back. Kathy, show us your hungry caterpillar. Oh, I, I showed it off during the thing, but I have oh, a... Did you? Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah. that's all right. Um, it's very similar to yours that a coworker made me. Um, but I did bring my mailbox that I made probably... 15 years ago just it was an old crayon box like we used to keep crayons and I just put mail and I would do found a letter so at the start of every story time found a letter found a letter found a letter here today today I found a letter found a letter here today and then we'd pull out the letter and be the letter a or the letter G and they'd tell me and share um, words that start with that letter um, or recognize kids that start with that their name starts with that letter um, and I thought this would be a great virtual twist for this summer um, or for those that can't in small and rural libraries especially that aren't able to reach out um, virtually you can mail letters home to your families and some tips and coloring sheets and things that go along with that letter of the of the week um, that well, you could a great idea mail out mm -hmm. to family so that's my idea 
Anybody else? Show and tell. Ah, here we go. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. I brought something that I made in the past. One of my favorite books is Rhyming Dust Bunnies. <laughs> uh, my dust bunnies are made from bath sponges. <gasps> oh, 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 those are awesome. Like those, those um, scrubbies? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, look at them. Wait, put them a little closer to the camera so we can see their faces. <gasps> she, we have to, she has to talk awesome. so we can, so okay. the recording can see it. Can you say, tell us what you made uh, to put on their noses? Um, that's a little fuzzy. I've heard lots about fuzzies today. And these are all like little felt hands um, that they're sewn on, felt hands and feet and ears. And then just kind of like, it's all just felt and this fuzzy, fuzzy little thing. But they can be held like this. I made quite a lot of them so that the kids in story time could hold them up. And then we would play rhyming games. You know, because Bob, you know, he doesn't rhyme very well. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. Awesome. <laughs> Anybody else have one? Anybody? Want to write in chat? No? All right. I just don't want to miss anybody. I can't see no. all video screens at either. once. So please do um, take the time. I appreciate you guys all sharing today, but take a couple minutes after this webinar. I did get a note that apparently um, the survey question number nine is stopping at the letter H for what library are you? So use the other box, please, to <laughs> tell us. I don't know what's going on in that survey, um, but take a minute to fill out that survey today. And Jen, we're really looking forward to seeing you back with us next week. On the 19th, yep. Yeah, or yeah, sorry, two weeks. Right. <laughs> two weeks and we're gonna be talking about how to help our families and caregivers share literacy and language experiences at home. So they feel more courageous about that. Wonderful. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.